Hi everybody, I'm Oscar Glotman. Uh, I'm an architect originally. I started my uh, architectural practice in the 80s, which dates me, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, in 2001, I uh, started curating companies uh, of product uh, that was very uh, particular and special and experimental that could be incorporated into the interior design and architecture practice. Uh, and also uh, it eventually evolved into a uh, retail sort of uh, situation where it feeds product to the general public. Um, the showroom is just down the street, and in this particular presentation, I'm going to present uh, MGX Materialize, which is basically um, one of the first companies, Materialize, from Belgium, uh, started making prototypes uh, in the 90s. And uh, these prototypes were um, for the medical field, uh, for the engineering field. Uh, but then there was a, an offshoot to the company, which is called MGX, that started developing uh, prototypes that could be uh, sold as ready-mates to the general public and applied to uh, projects. So in this case, I'm uh, bringing in some examples of their very sophisticated machines that are uh, going to pretty much show you what everybody else has been presenting up to now in a more uh, you know finished sort of product that can be distributed and sold to the general public. Um, this is the uh, laser sintering technology, which is basically a very fine powder that gets solidified in layers of uh, increments that are less than a millimeter. Uh, and you'll see later on uh, how these uh, are evolving into product. Um, the process uh, can take up to days, depending on how complicated the pieces are. I brought some here that uh, you can see later, uh, which are born out of the machine, completely assembled, but with functioning parts. So it can get pretty uh, sophisticated as far as how the product uh, is born out of the system. Um, here, uh, you know, I'm starting to show the different sources of inspiration for the products developed by the MGX uh, and it's all uh, by inv invitation to uh, artists from all over the world. This particular piece is called Taurus and here you could see, slightly see the increments uh, that build the piece um, which in turn gives it specific qualities of translucence that are applied to the uh, final product. Uh, these are some sources of inspiration and with it, you know, you have either mathematical equations or more organic kind of compositions. This one here uh, is actually a photograph of uh, water um, that is then translated into a 3D model. Um, this is a, also based on a, on a sponge uh, and then some other lines that are generated uh, from organic sort of uh, formulas. Um, the uh, products that you see here, some of them have special coatings. Um, here's other, uh, another sort of uh, in source of inspiration where you have a more poetic approach from you know, different artists. Uh, these are interpretations through letters and words to something more lyrical. Uh, and then here you could see the rabbit uh, footprint from the top and from the bottom. Uh, the one-shot piece, which you see here, uh, is uh, one of their larger pieces, and this takes, uh, I think, up to a day and a half of printing, where they do several, they maybe do two or three in one of their machines. Uh, this one has moving parts. And here you uh, are beginning to see the, the scale increasing into furniture, uh, and then impl implications of the scale into a more architectural sort of component, which eventually I think is the future. Um, the mo more significant and revolutionary um, repercussions, I think, of this type of process is that it is doing away with the concept of building on modules, which was up to now in history 
uh, you know, the concept of the brick and building modules or pieces of wood, it's completely uh, disintegrated as a concept. Now we can start building out of infinite number of parts that are completely unique one from the other, and uh, the results are unique from, you know, a molecular level like some of the presentations that were shown here to an architectural sort of, uh, you know, scale. Um, here you see from the scale of jewelry, uh, a pen, for example, and then before you saw the larger elements. Um, the uh, stereolithography, which is something that is more, uh, it is, is not as common, um, yields product that has an inner color. Um, the stereolithography is, is, is a liquid process rather than a powder. And um, the way that, it func that, that it's, it's created is uh, in a tank where um, you could see this one here, this is uh, stereolithography, um, where instead of solidifying powder, it actually hardens liquid. These need support that gets later cut out because they need to be suspended. And with the powder, you have uh, inert uh, qualities that where the powder starts to support the piece without having to have stems onto it. Um, this uh, lamp here is uh, inspired by a fortune cookie and uh, you have the letters embedded into the lamp so that when the light is on it projects onto the ceiling your fortune. Um, and I left this one for last because I think that uh, this is actually the fingerprint of the artist that has been uh, memorized in a sphere, which pretty much symbolizes the infinity of the process where it can become anything you really want it to be and it's the next level in design at all, at all uh, scales.